Hey there, um, this is the follow-up video for my last tutorial, which was the movement tutorial. Uh, as you can see right here, we got the tutorial one basic movement. I just opened the old file and uh, I'll get into what's going on. So let's start by adding, because we will be working with uh, enemies enemies today, like how we can create enemies and turn-taking with, with several players. If you have tried to do this stuff yourself, um, you probably already experienced that it's, you can uh, just add players and it should you know, take stuff into account. Um, so we'll just make a, a red sprite for a, um, a an enemy. I'll just duplicate the player because the enemy will be basically like the player object enemy one. Um, we'll give him the sprite here. Of course, the sprites we will change them in a different way later for for um, other purposes. But I'll I'll get to that because right now it's just about like you know initializing the the basic stuff. Let's just copy the player as well and let's make this guy a an object enemy general. Uh, I know the general part maybe just seems stupid to some, but this is my, my way of always making sure and making sure that the parent is the new object. So, this guy will also be checking variables. He will have the same cooldown and movement and everything like that. So let's just go and add him first, because that will be the most important thing to do, to just check stuff. Let's just make sure that we do this the right way. Yeah, so he's supposed to so start in each other um, in different uh, part of the, the battlefield. So, um, yeah. So what happens now is that whenever it's his turn, Right, that's the thing. Whenever it's his turn, the same thing will, will happen here. Um, this is fine as well, and this is good as well, because it will be the same thing. So what happens here, we will need to go to, instead of checking this variable, we will be checking a new alarm. So we will check alarm 1 for the path, because this will be the enemy one. So, um, there will be some different stuff we need to change, because... Um, we, dupl we just duplicate that and make it this for the the alarm one. So the thing will be that um, it will check for uh, if he if he can move there. Um, so we'll just add this uh, is equal to if place meeting and new player is equal to false and if place meeting enemy on oh, oh shit we need to actually we should make this to the general one why why is it that we haven't done that already and um, that's a bit confusing so so this means that he you cannot move to a space that is occupied already uh let's just no instead of doing this let's do it the the the, the, the proper way do we have to we have the avoid yeah we have the avoid nice okay so we will use that so if there is an avoid object um you cannot move there right and so the avoid objects are the players. The players here and the enemies are avoid objects. So you cannot move on top of an existing object. This makes sense. So let's just copy that into the alarm one because that was clearly a mistake. Um, right. If place meaning of the one, huh? Okay, so for this one, alarm one. Now, so the thing is that if can move is equal to true, then global dust dot uh, check um, check movement let's call it that is equal to true so this means that um, at some point in the game we will try to figure out if there is even a possibility to move because we can't we now cannot control the enemy so let's put this into the control values uh, equal to false at the moment and this needs to be each time that this this is initialized um, with the enemy, we need to make sure that it's that it's off. So it's taken off already. Um, and so for now, the important thing will be to actually try to figure out um, whether or not that um, oh, shoot, whether or not uh, we can uh, move towards a specific field. Because at the moment, it'll, it'll just in, it'll just um, finish off, and that's it. So the thing is that the enemy here, uh, where is he? The enemy here needs to actually check another variable, which would be he's just his next alarm, which would be alarm one, because it would actually be starting his movement. So let's say that uh, whenever he's checking, let's say that alarm zero equals to ten, um, and so when it reaches when it reaches that, um, it will check for the alarm one. So if alarm one is equal to uh, no, sorry. And for alarm one, we will just ask if this one, this this variable, the global variable, has been checked. Then we can actually move. Move equals to true. And at that point, because we know that, 
um, he will start moving, and when he has uh, when he's done moving, he will like like all the others just end up in the the, the right place where he's supposed to go. And he will give the turn to the player again, and he will set his initiative cooldown and all that stuff, which is pretty damn standard. So, and this is initialized each time, so we don't even have to put it as false again. Actually, you could just put it as true, and then it is is rendered as false anyway. So, but the thing is that go for the path again. So, for now, we need to we need to figure out whether this one is the closest or not the closest. So, if can move is equal to true, then you'll say if point distance extra wide at um if the distance from this this space towards the uh the nearest enemy let's the nearest player so let's say that um we initialize a variable call nearest player and then we say that the nearest player is equal to instance nearest oh sorry uh nearest x y dot object player general because we need to find the the parent object okay then um, it's a pretty long one though but it's fine okay so we'll just put this so this this will figure out whether um, um, let's just say that so this will give a distance is small is uh, smaller than then let's just say that there needs to be another other id dot let's say uh let's say travel distance let's call it that travel distance travel distance okay then for the other id um xx equal to x and yy equal to y and we also need to remember uh, to remove this because this will this will uh, this is only for the player so I'll just explain that in a moment. So um, this means that if this particular path object is closer to the nearest ally, which is the player that you control, then this will be the one that he will move towards because he will, the play the enemy will actually will just this artificial intelligence at least will try to find just find targets and try to attack targets. So if uh, instead of moving to a random space. It will always move towards the space that it can move to that is closest to a, another uh, enemy which would be an ally because the uh, the enemies of the enemies are the allies right uh, okay cool so we just need to initialize this called travel distance and uh, for the travel distance each time it is initialized for the enemy um, first of all we need to initialize it so uh, let's just say that it's equal to like a super high number because it always needs to be smaller right and each time we, we, we end the turn, we need to make it like super high again. Because um, whenever we start over, we need to get a new travel distance. Let's say, I don't even know if that's enough. Let's just put it as a million, uh, a million pixels. This is how many pixels. I don't think a million pixels would be like way too much, but either way, let's just do it to, to be sure that we, we don't mess this up. So the thing is that for now, let's just check it out. There are probably some, some, some errors. There are always some weird errors. Uh, yeah, can move. We need to change that to something else. Let's say this called let's call it uh, uh, enemy move. Let's just call it that. Enemy move. Okay. Then just say that. Let's take uh, can move and just uh, replace it. Okay. Enemy move. Enemy move. Enemy move. Enemy move. Enemy move equals to false. Cool. Okay. Good. So the thing is that we need to initialize this enemy move equals to false. Remember, okay. So for alarm zero, uh, no, sorry, that's not the thing. For the draw event, if that or this is equal to to true, so this means that we can actually see his movement, right? We we want to be able to see the movement. Um, so let's go for the enemy again. So when the, all this is initialized, normally, normally when we ask, we are the player, we just press it and then we select it and then everything is good. Let's just put that here, in, just in case there are some errors. Uh yeah, good, good. Okay, so the thing that we want to do is to go to the enemy object, and whenever the movement is initialized, we will do uh we will erase all of this stuff and move it. He will move toward the x y position, and when he has reached the position, he will stop. Um, and he will, you know, send the turn to the next person. So let's just try and test it and see if it works. 
that is like the uh, the cool part. Okay, so I think we covered the mo some of the most important stuff uh, for the the anime movement at least. It, it takes some time, so let's just go to the testing phase um, right now. Oh, this is another game I'm working on. It's, it's pretty nice. You can see it in a moment. Okay, so cool cool thing. Already now we got a bug because there's clearly some some sort of bug here. Uh, I think the problem was that we were not supposed to move around objects avoidable objects um, let's see okay oh shit so if place meeting yeah of course if place meeting uh, object avoidable can move equals to false so whenever we try to initialize this we need to make this false again yeah, that's that's pretty simple. Why didn't I? That was just a mix up by me. That just that's, that's, this is the thing like one variable that can fuck up everything, right? Um, so okay, I just want to before we do this, go over the alarm one event. So what happens is that uh, the enemy cannot move to every space. We calculate the distance between this space and the enemy, and if this distance is actually okay for him to travel based on his movement, then. Uh, he can move it's true but then if he the place that he wants to move to has a, an object uh, that is that, that must be avoided like a player or another enemy or himself to be honest then he cannot move again then if he is able to move then he, it will try to find the nearest uh, target so if right okay sorry I just needed to cut the video and stuff this is what it's supposed to look like in the end Let's just go and check out the stuff that we need to finish. Because right now, the only thing we, are, we actually need to finish is uh, for the uh, for the for the path object and for the enemy. To be honest, I think so. It should look something like this. Need to make sure that this one was is is right. I fucked that up earlier. So it's supposed to say that of course, because it's the enemy movement that we're checking. It's supposed to be the enemy movement that is equal to false whenever you beat a, a, an uh, an avoidable object. Then of course we need to have the variables like. Uh, Find the nearest player and have the uh, the TD, which is the travel distance calculated between the, the nearest player and the, the path object itself. And if this travel distance is smaller than the travel distance of the other ID, which is the enemy, then he will get a new travel distance, which is smaller, of course. But it's the only trigger if it's smaller. This means that finding the path uh, will only find a path if it's the path is closest to the enemy that you want to attack and the enemy of the enemy is the ally so if it's closer to you right so after that is initialized uh, automatically the enemy will ask for the alarm one so if the global movement if for instance was equal to false then we will need to pass the turn whenever we pass the turn um, all this will be uh, initialized again um, I think we yeah also add the travel distance value in here and make it like a million or something it's it just just a high number but a million is probably a bit over the edge it doesn't really matter much it's just an, an variable that will be checked over and over um, and for the enemy again whenever you finish uh, finish your turn make sure to call these variables um, I think we're good to go now let's just go and take a look at it before we end and then we can talk about how we can do because the next step for this game would be to attack enemies and have enemies attack you and add all the nice effects because this is just the movement in, in itself let's just try and check it out yeah i'm moving over there he's moving towards the closest space towards me right he will move towards the closest space available that is closest to whatever enemy he is attacking so i cannot move over there but um, we will have a, uh, I think, in time, uh, like a red, a red space b beneath, and that, and that will be, that will be just great. Um, a red space beneath that will like be, um, be for the attacking. And so now he cannot move. But he will move towards the closest space uh, that he can move towards. I think he will move down here. I'm not sure, but yeah. Okay, so he had to start there. So we got some good movement here now, uh, turn based with artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. Um, this is uh, next time we will, we will work on the attacking and how we can make attack phases like move attack or just attack or something I don't know maybe move and attack I don't know I don't know something like that uh, anyway stay tuned for more info this was uh, a nice tutorial hope you can use it indeed.